Hi, my name is Yash Ravastav and I'm a co-founder of Tensi Race Cars. In this video, uh, I'm going to discuss a little bit about uh, how to design an upright for your competition cars. Generally, in all sorts of competition cars, people go for double wishbone suspensions and upright forms a very important component of double wishbone suspensions and takes most of the time uh, to design successfully. Now, I have sorted out certain images uh, that are available online of uprights. These are the few of the images that are available online if you uh, type FSAE uprights on Google or competition car uprights. Then um, the most common thing that you'll find in these uprights are these these small holes or these small uh, you know sections from which materials has been material has been removed. And they pay more attention. Uh, towards removing weight in a very orderly fashion while designing an upright for their vehicles and uh, which is actually a very a secondary part of upright building now we also repeat uh, you know receive uprights for fabrication by competition car teams and everyone almost everyone uh, have this uh, habit of practicing this material removal uh, in their uprights so that they can reduce weight. Now, reducing weight is important, but as far as modeling or designing an upright is concerned, then the first thing that you have to look at is uh, the following three things. The first thing that you'll have to worry about is the distance between the upper and lowering upper and lower mounting points. Uh, that is uh, defined by your suspension geometry, which you have to sit and thoroughly work out. Uh, you know, so so that uh, you, you know you have the roll center at the right point, you have the instantaneous centers at the right locations, and you know the distance between the roll axis and the mass and tread axis is as per your requirements. And this entire uh, you know uh, um, uh, set of calculations that help you decide the various parameters of your suspension geometry uh, also helps you decide the distance between the upper and lower mounting points on the uprights. The second factor is the caster angle. Okay, now if we look at this image that I found online about caster angle, here is an image which shows caster angle. Okay, so if suppose this is the wheel and this is the forward direction, then the angle formed uh, by the orientation of your upright from the vertical. So this angle that you are making over here is the caster angle. Now on this line, your your mounting points of the suspensions will be on this line, on this up uh, because this is the actually the angle of your upright. So over here you'll have the top mounting point, and this uh, over here somewhere you have the bo the the bottom mounting point. So this is a uh, caster angle. Now if you have your upright line like this, then it'll be a positive caster. If you have your upright line like this, it'll be a negative caster. So caster angle forms one of the most important components one of the most important parameters for upright design. The third is the kingpin angle. Now what is kingpin angle? Again we have an image which shows uh, properly what um, a kingpin angle is. Okay, so suppose this is your upright. This is the top and the bottom mounting point. So this angle now over here this um, uh, you know the, you, you're seeing the vehicle from the front. Okay, in case in this case in which you are you were looking at the In this case, in which we were looking at the uh, caster angle, we were looking at the vehicle from the side. Okay, so that's why you're seeing a circular tire over here. How, however, in this case, we are looking at the vehicle from the front. So you have the tire over here, like, and this um, angle that uh, your kingpin axis, which is the line connecting the two. Uh, suspension mounting points, the upper and lower mounting points, is making with the vertical. That is the kingpin axis. Okay, so well, when you are designing the uprights, you have to worry about these three parameters, uh, which is the distance between the upper and lower mounting points, the caster angle, and the kingpin angle. These geometric considerations are the basic starting line for you uh, for the for designing the uprights. Okay, so if uh, suppose we try to work out. Uh, a simple upright on solid works then uh, I find it very easy to make one such line which gives me a 3d a 3d uh, arrangement of the two mounting points that I am having okay so 
uh, the now if you look at uh, the two mounting points then they are at an angle in various planes now suppose if i'm looking at the side plane then this is the angle or the orientation of my upright in the side plane if i'm looking at the front from the front then this line is the orientation this line is the orientation of my upright in the front so you know at this these two points i am having my suspension mounting points okay so it will be very easy for me if i know the physical uh, location of these points okay and i can start making my upright from over here so how can i do this suppose firstly i look at the side plane and i'll draw the sketch okay i'll make a simple orthogonal line which is uh, at a particular angle from the vertical now this dotted line is the vertical line this dotted line is the vertical line and this is the line uh, which is at a particular angle at 3 degree angle from the vertical line now this 3 degree this 3 degree is my caster angle okay i have decided according to my suspension geometry that i need a 3 degree caster in my uh in my in my suspension geometry or in my upright okay so i have given i have drawn a simple line 3 degrees uh, at a 3 degree angle from the vertical okay and this is in the side plane so it defines my caster now again i draw another sketch in the front plane okay which is at 7.1 degrees now if you know if, if you look, yeah exactly so this is my kingpin axis okay this is the top mounting point the bottom mounting point and the angle that i am seeing over here bit uh, from the vertical is the kingpin angle okay so now i have both these sketches available okay which are uh, you know are orthogonal projections of my two suspension mounting points and these are telling me the locations of my suspension mounting points okay and now since i have these two sketches i'll use a curve uh, feature to make a 3d curve okay corresponding to these two orthogonal views so i have two orthogonal views i have used curve to make another uh, to make a curve which is actually uh, you know or rather i can say that this curve uh projects the two orthogonal Uh, lines that i have through these sketches okay so this curve completely defines uh, uh the two mounting points of my suspension on the upright right so this is the curve about which i have to design my upright i have the two mounting points available with me i'll go into the side plane again so that i can you know simply have a uh you know a feel of my caster angle right now i have already designed this upright i have already drawn it so i'll uh, quickly just uh, you know start unhiding the features uh, that i actually started with suppose i unhide this extrude feature that i have made now you can see that this is a very simple very straightforward upright and what i have done is i have just included the two places where i am going to place my suspension ball joints and i have given a small bore for the bearing okay now you can see yeah now you can see that uh, the two mounting points lie exactly at the center okay of these rectangular cavities that i am having where my suspension ball joints will go okay so all the uh, both the uh, 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 ball joints of the two arms will be exactly located at the positions that i want okay now this is the side view of my geometry if i look at the front view it will be something like this so it it's a rectangular bo block and this is the location of the this is the location of the suspension points right so this is a simple extrude okay now let's unhide another extrude command
Okay, this is an extrude cut command, which is actually made a hole over here. Okay, this hole is exactly, exactly, uh, you can say, this point is exactly, this hole is exactly co-centric to the point that I have made for the suspension geometry. Okay. Okay, yeah, see, here is the point and here is the hole. So, uh, this point is actually the center of this hole. So, this is the hole through which the bolt which will be used to mount the suspension ball joint will pass. Okay, so the first, uh, the top uh, mounting point of uh, uh, my suspension is has been located on the upright. Similarly, I'll make another extrude come, um, you know, I'll make another uh, extrude cut, I'll make another hole for the bottom mounting points. Then I've made a feature for the caliper mounts. Now it's a very simple, very, uh, very, uh, you know, I've used just, just the basic uh, uh, features to model these, uh, these various uh, uh, components uh, but you you can also go for sophisticated features or you can also go for sophisticated tools to you know make them uh, more appealing aesthetically but that comes later first you have to uh, work on the geometry and work on the basic layout of your upright okay now I'll unhide all these uh, extrude come okay fine now what I've done is if I again hide these cut extrude so and again if I go to the front view of my upright then it's a rectangular block now see suspensions are going to be mounted over here and over here so I don't really need this part this this extra material so this weight is unnecessarily being added now how much of it is actually required as far as strength is concerned that you will come to know uh, once you do the FE, FS, uh, sorry, FEA of your upright but uh, uh, you know, uh, after doing the FEA, when you are actually aware that how much strength you actually need at these particular locations, you can remove materials. And if I look at the materials that I have removed, then this section has been chopped off. So I have cut out material from over here because I don't need that much material. Okay. Now, Okay, I've again I've, I've removed some more material at the caliper mounts. Yes, of course. I I don't need this uh, much thick caliper mounts. Okay, that again you can come to know by doing an FEA. I have removed material from over here. Okay, to give it a more uh, you know organized shape. Right. Now I have added a spigot, or uh, not? Ex yeah, exactly. You can say you can say a spigot, or uh, you know, because the bearing that I had been using, ha or, you know, of a particular size. So I have added a small uh, extension to the bore so that my bearing can be accommodated. Then I have placed a steering arm, and then I have. Uh, remove the material as required and uh, made a location where the steering uh, tie rod will be fastened okay fine so you can see that almost my upright is taking shape now right and these holes have been converted into slots okay so my basic upright is ready so we started from a from a curve from a basic curve which is nothing but uh, just uh, you know uh, a geometry that gives me the location of the two uh, suspension mounting points that I'm having in 3d so I have accommodated both the kingpin and the caster angles and the distance between the two mounting points together in this one in this one curve that I had made. So I don't have to do any calculation 
while fabricating or while uh, modeling my upright all the calculations have been done and this simple line has been drawn now i have to uh, uh, completely design my entire or you know model my entire upright around this line okay so you can uh, simplify your work uh, by uh, figuring out such methods in which you know uh, you don't have to worry too much about the basics the basic calculations on which your or the basic parameters on which your design has to work okay and then slowly and steadily i started one by one with the basic shape that my upright has to take and then i started optimizing the shape as per the requirement as per fea and uh, as per uh, you know um, uh, the the actual ground requirements of my upright like this is the thickness of the upright but my bearing was not able to get accommodated in this so i had to extend this bore so all of a sudden uh, if you if i start jumping on to like suppose if i have made the extended uh, bore earlier then it would have been very difficult for me to work out this shape you know with an extended bore and then working out this entire shape would have been difficult for me okay or suppose if i would have started instead of starting with this curve with the straight line which uh, defines my uh, mounting points if i would have started with this uh, with a square with a bore you know it would have been difficult for me to calculate okay so these are the advantages that you get while you using a 3d cad software because so many things are there to assist you in making your cad models which are actually not available to you if suppose if i'm using a um, a a pencil and a paper to make to model this upright uh, with the help of a drafter or uh, you know which is a very um, in the uh, the fundamental way of uh, making engineering drawing uh i have an advantage of using uh, a 3d cad software and i should be fully aware of all these advantages otherwise i'll be missing out to something okay so uh, this is the basic shape that my upright has taken now suppose if i want to remove more weight suppose this part has some extra weight added to it i can simply click on it i can make the uh, contour that i want and i can cut off that amount of weight from it so it's very easy to optimize the design once you have the basic layout ready but it's always difficult if you are working with uh, concepts like these if you have these in mind and then you are working on the uprights like uh, you know so that you can uh, uh you can make something like this then it becomes difficult okay so you must always be familiar with the ground realities and uh your calculations your suspension geometries and then you have to work out the basic after that you can you know take inspiration from these things uh you know to improve your design or to take suggestions on how you have to you know uh, optimize uh, your design to reduce weight I hope this video helped you in understanding some of the basic uh, uh, approach uh, towards uh, CAD modeling uh, components like these. If you have any suggestions on these, then please post your comments, and you can also, uh, you know, post. Uh, um, um, you can also mail us with your suggestions. Post your comments to uh, help us understand your. Uh, uh you stand on these kind of videos and um, help us uh, uh you know understand your more of your requirements so that we can help you out with more videos and more tutorials you can also find some cad modeling uh um, articles which may help you in uh, strategizing your cad modeling uh, procedure uh, in your uh, race car building endeavor um, on our tinsi blog So I hope this video was helpful and please let us know if you um, have any doubts regarding this or if you have any more queries regarding uh, anything as far as competition car building is concerned and we'll try our level best to answer all your queries you know so thank you very much and all the best